Hi, good afternoon. My name is Roham Zamanian. I'm the medical director of the Adult Pulmonary Hypertension Program at Stanford University Medical Center, and I am on to talk to you a little bit about what's going on with coronavirus and the specifics of what a pulmonary hypertension community and the pulmonary hypertension patient should be thinking about. I think the first place that we have to start with is is that patients in the community should know that there's a lot of concern out there, and there's a lot of stuff in the media, and there's a lot of stuff on social media. The first place that they should really refer to for information in general should be the CDC websites and their own county healthcare system websites. Those will be the most up-to-date, and the CDC website is Really, if they look up coronavirus CDC or COVID-19 CDC, they'll, they'll be able to find very specific information, both for patients and physicians. I think that the second thing that patients should realize is this is um, a viral infection, and it is one that is moderately contagious and moderately impactful on their health. It seems to be one that is probably more dangerous for susceptible patients, and therefore that's what pH patients should be careful about, and also the elderly. There's a lot of panic out there to some extent, but I think patients, caregivers, everyone, all of us, the physicians, should start off with the point where taking responsibility for your own hygiene and hand washing is of utmost importance. Hand sanitizers are good, but they're not necessary. The basics are hand washing, good hand washing techniques. There's plenty of videos online that they can look up that and uh, just basically employ it as often as possible. And the second thing I'm telling my patients to do is to avoid unnecessary environments. Whether you visit a friend, it's up to you or not. But, you know, really, I think that at this point in time, there's universities that have changed their classes to online. You know, if you're planning on taking a trip, it's worthwhile looking into delaying that trip. If you're thinking of going to a large event where you won't have a lot of control over who and how you come in contact with other people, it's wise to rethink that. And I'm doing that for my own family. I'm doing it for my patients. And I think that's the first place we have to start off with. Some of the other things to think about are who are the points of contact for you for your health care? I'm sure each patient who is part of a pulmonary hypertension center should have access to their pH experts. And, and really, you know, I think what we would begin with is the idea is do you have an upper respiratory tract symptoms? Do you have fevers? And have you had any recent travel or contact with people who have either traveled to areas that are suspicious? The international destinations are currently listed by the CDC. The hardest thing about this is it's just a common variety flu and the upper respiratory tract infection. But I think being vigilant and making sure to communicate with the healthcare system, getting your information from reputable sources is a good place to start. It's always good to have hygiene products available. The hand sanitizers are, have become ridiculously difficult to find and they're, they're not necessary. First of all, the hand sanitizers that you have to find are the recommendation are the ones that have 60% or more of alcohol obvious, but patients should not be using drinking alcohol like vodka or, or any of those spirits to make solutions to, to wash hands with. The reality of it is you don't need that. You could you could really use antibacterial soap along with lukewarm water hand washing techniques. And again, you could look at you know the duration of and how to do proper hand washing out there. So I think a uh, supply of a product like that, and, and I think that the other thing is, is that Patients may be told by their physician to isolate themselves. They may be told to self-quarantine in in their home for either their own safety or other people's safety. And if that happens, obviously, they're going to have to have supplies that could last them 7 to 14 days, whatever duration that they're told to do so. But make sure you have a plan, both a communication plan and a support plan. A lot of the pH patients that we take care of have family that support them as well. And so I think you should be thinking about some of those support mechanisms that could help you get through it. There's nothing magical. You don't need to run out and, and buy all the toilet paper in the world. You don't need to go buy all the water bottles in the world. It's more that you should have some plans in case you are required to quarantine. And then I guess the, the bigger thing is avoidance of any ill contact or situations where they can get exposed to other people who they don't know they have had uh, ill contact. The Stanford team is inclined to say that our stable patients with pulmonary hypertension who 
haven't had any change in our medications or change in our symptoms for a very long time. We are considering asking them not to travel to the clinic and come to a healthcare environment where there's potential exposure. But again, I think it's very difficult to get specific on this. And I think that the patients who turn to their primary pulmonologist or primary care physician, whoever is caring for them for their pulmonary hypertension to decide on that. In terms of the flu shot and flu vaccine, while the vaccine is not for this strain of coronavirus, I still encourage my patients to seek and get flu shots if they have not done so already. You have to think that there are multiple viruses that are traveling around, and this happens to be something that we're very focused on, coronavirus, but there are other pathogens, other viruses that are uh, respiratory viruses that we still want to make sure our patients are vaccinated against. So our recommendations stay the same. But the other aspect of this is the patients who are on routine medications through mail order that need refills, they should stay on top of it. I just, you know, again, not giving any specific advice, but it's good habit and good practice to make sure you plan ahead for your refills and have those in hand. I think the only other thing to say is, is that the situation continues to be evolving. Patients should continue to stay up to date with, as I mentioned, appropriate sources and make sure that they follow the advice of their primary or pulmonary or cardiology physicians. This is a dynamic situation. Things are changing and as protocols and procedures change or if there are any significant updates, patients should continue to be engaged and look at the CDC and obviously we're glad to have another follow-up interview um, and, and give you any updates whether we have some at Stanford or in the broad sense for patients with pulmonary hypertension. My name is Roham Samanian. I am a PH physician and I am aware that my patients are rare and lovely.